question is a math question. It says, what is 0 0.12 times 10 to the negative 3 power as a decimal? OK. <coughs> I can do that. Just leave that up for, there for a second, Derek. Why? Mm -hmm. Times uh, 10 to the negative third power? Correct. Cool. OK. Go to my screen. I can help you out. Um, all right, so this is a number that is written, uh, it's close to scientific notation. It's actually technically not, um, but close to scientific notation. And I'm going to talk about a little concept before I actually um, explain how and why this is, well, I'll explain why this is done before I explain how it's done. So when we multiply something by 10, um, how many... Nathan and, and Sam, how many of you heard, have you guys heard, uh, when you multiply something by 10, just add a zero? Yeah, that's that many a time. That's the, the simple way to explain it, right? It's a simple <laughs> way to explain it. It's not necessarily true, but it is. It's a simple way to explain it. I know, I remember my elementary school teacher saying that. So if I did 12 times zero, or mm -hmm. t 12 times 10, I'd get 12 with a zero on the end, right? Or if I did 3 times 10, I'm going to get 3 with a zero on the end. Um, which is technically uh, uh, not true. Uh, it is an easy way to explain it. And the reason why I say that is because let's say we do 3.0 times 10, which you know what? 3.0, same as 3. Mm -hmm. If I just do 3.0 with a 0 on the end, that's not true. Mm -hmm. That's not a true fact. And so um, multiple, what's really happening when you're multiplying something by 10 is not that you're adding a zero on the end, but that you're moving your decimal point over a place value. So what's happening here is this three, it's really like 3.0, that is the same thing. And what's happening to get 30, or when we're multiplying by 10, is that our decimal is moving over a place value, giving us 30 when we multiply by 10. So when you multiply by 10 once, we move our decimal point over once. Um, you might have also heard, all right, when you multiply by 100, add two zeros. Well, it's not, again, that we're adding two zeros. It's that we are taking our decimal spot on this three, and we're moving it over to the right two spots to give us 300. Now, the same goes, and maybe, um, actually, let me explain this a little bit more, is so multiplying by 100 would be the same thing as multiplying by 10 twice, which, again, is why I'm moving my decimal over two times. Now, um, the problem that we're seeing up here is actually with negative exponents. Now, when you're doing a negative exponent, what you're doing is dividing. So if I said I was taking something times 10 to the negative 1 power, really what I'm doing is that I'm dividing it by 10 once. Think of um, division as the opposite of multiplication, which is why. If I'm taking something times 10 to the negative 2, what that really means is that I'm dividing it by 10 two times. So when I mention that if I multiply something by 10, I move the decimal over to the right. If I divide something by 10, I move my decimal over to the left. And so when I'm looking at this big, this problem here, what this is really saying is that I'm taking 0.12 and I'm dividing it by 10 three times. Which means what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take my decimal and I'm going to move it to the left three times. Now, if there's no placeholders here, just like I did earlier, we just write a zero. So if I do ten, uh, 0 0.12 times 10 to the negative third, I end up getting point. I've got these three zeros here, one, two. And that's why. So I could have answered that, I guess, pretty quickly, but I wanted to explain why that happens. And then that way, maybe it may, might make a little bit more sense as to, like, when you, just when you see any other problem like that, how to actually do it. So hopefully that helped.